coming from California, I don't get to experience significant differences during the seasons. So whenever I travel, I always look for seasonal specific activities to include in my itinerary. Japan is known for sakura or cherry blossoms during the springtime. However, many other endemic Japanese plants are also in bloom. Today, we will visit a Tokyo shrine infamous for its colorful azalea garden in the spring. I'll also show you additional activities to add to your day itinerary in the neighboring Ueno area. Let's head on out and start our day. During your Japan research, you've probably heard you must head to locations early to avoid the crowds. This is one of those places. I say that because the main areas were narrower and could get congested during peak times. The Azalea Garden at Nezu Shrine opens at 9.30 a.m., but the Inari Tori Gates are open 24-7. I decided to visit the gates early and grab a coffee nearby until the garden opened. The Nezu Shrine Torii Gate pathway is lined with vermilion Torii Gates, leading to an Anadi Shrine, which is dedicated to the deity of rice and agriculture. The Torii Gates serve as a symbolic entrance to the Anadi Shrine. The significance of the color is to ward off evil spirits, remove impurities, and bring power. It also symbolizes vitality and protection. The gate pathway here is much smaller than the infamous Fushimi Inari in Kyoto. Although it's a popular tourist destination, the gates are considered a place for quiet reflection and provide a glimpse into some of Japan's Shinto practices. I'm so glad that we got here early. Yeah, we got here around 7.30 and there's only a trickle of people here, so it was really easy to get a photo. And now we're just gonna head over to a place. Actually, I think we're gonna spend some time at the shrine and then we're going to go get some drip coffee because we started the day kind of early. Nezu Shrine is one of the oldest Shinto shrines in Tokyo and was established in 1705. It's one of the few shrines in Tokyo that survived the war and significant natural disasters. The shrine largely retained its original structures, making it a precious example of Edo area architecture for visitors to see firsthand. The Japanese government has designated it an important cultural property. Nezu Shrine hosts various traditional Shinto festivals and events throughout the year, allowing visitors to experience Japanese religious culture. After grabbing a quick bite, we head back to Nezu Shrine to line up for the Azalea Garden. We lined up a half an hour before the garden opened and people were already waiting. The garden opened at 9.30 a.m. when we visited, and admission was 500 yen cash only. Nezu Shrine Azalea Garden boasts over 3,000 azalea bushes ranging in variety and color. The Azalea Festival is held every spring and is one of the highlights of Tokyo's spring calendar. 
The garden was believed to have been developed during the Edo period, a time of relative peace, stability, and prosperity. This allowed for the development of cultural activities and the arts, including elaborate gardens. The period was even known as the Golden Age of Horticulture. Azaleas are native to Japan and were popular during the Edo period because of their vibrant colors. The cultivation of azaleas became a fashionable hobby among the samurai and wealthy merchant classes. The garden's designs over the years has been carefully maintained and remained largely unchanged. The Nezu Shrine Azalea Garden is a wonderful living representation of Japanese horticultural art. The bloomed azaleas are also a reminder of the fleeting nature of life. The garden provides an opportunity for visitors to reflect and experience a traditional Japanese garden in the heart of the city. I always recommend planning your Japan days around specific areas. Choose activities that are close by versus tiring yourself out going all over the place. One area worth considering after the Nezu Shrine is the Ueno Park area. There are so many museums and things to do in the Ueno area, but my priority was to visit the Tokyo National Museum. The Tokyo National Museum is Japan's oldest and largest museum. It was established in 1872 and founded as a part of Japan's efforts to modernize and create westernized institutions following the Meiji Restoration in 1868. The museum became a cultural hub in Tokyo. After it moved to its current location in Ueno Park in 1881, its collection grew rapidly thanks to donations made from private investors, the imperial family, and discoveries made from archaeological sites across Japan. The Tokyo National Museum plays a significant role in preserving Japan's heritage. Its collection includes over 110,000 items. Ranging from ancient statues, pottery, samurai armor, to Edo period paintings and Meiji era artifacts. You can also see national treasures and important cultural properties on display. There's also artifacts from other Asian cultures to show Japan's historical connections to its neighbors in Asia. If you're a history buff or have any interest in Japanese history, this is the place for you. The main building feels enormous and is filled to the brim with some of the most interesting artifacts from the past. The museum has multiple buildings, but I recommend starting in the main building, located straight ahead when you enter the museum grounds. The amount of exhibitions and history available can be a bit overwhelming, so start with the main event first. The Tokyo National Museum is one of Tokyo's most visited cultural attractions and for a reason. It attracts millions of visitors each year and offers a comprehensive overview of Japanese history and culture. I'm so glad I went because it felt like an essential place to visit for someone who wants to learn as much as possible about her Japanese heritage. I wasn't able to see everything the museum had to offer because honestly, I was getting tired and hungry. Lunch at the museum restaurant was okay, but super convenient. The Tokyo National Museum is located in Ueno Park. Ueno Park was originally the location of temple grounds, but after the Battle of Ueno, 
and the Meiji Restoration, it became one of Japan's first public parks. In 1873, the Japanese government sought to modernize the country and introduce Western style public parks. Over time, it became a cultural and educational hub, housing several important museums and institutions like the Tokyo National Museum, National Museum of Western Art, Tokyo Metropolitan Art Museum, National Museum of Nature and Science, and the Ueno Zoo. Japan's first zoo is also located within the park. Ueno Park is also a very popular cherry blossom viewing spot. So if you're in Tokyo during Sakura season, definitely make sure to stop by. When visiting Ueno Park, I recommend heading over to the Shinobazu Pond. This large pond was originally intended to enhance the spiritual ambiance of the temple associated with the Tokugawa shogunate. It was modeled after Lake Biwa, Japan's largest lake near Kyoto. The temple located on the island is dedicated to the goddess of all things that flow, which includes water, words, wealth, music, and wisdom. Today, the pond itself serves as a habitat for various species of birds and aquatic life. I tend to avoid Japan in the summer, but if you go, the pond's lotus flowers bloom in the summer and are supposed to be incredibly beautiful. It is also a popular spot to paddle around in boats. Like I said earlier, I highly recommend planning your schedule around certain areas of Tokyo. It gets really tiring hopping from place to place, and there's so much to see and do in pockets of Tokyo. When I plan my Japan itineraries, I literally pick an area, zoom into that area on Google Maps, and start randomly clicking on places that seem interesting. I hope you found this video helpful when planning your trip. Or that you've discovered a new area in Japan. Next time, we are going to check something off my Japan bucket list seeing Mount Fuji. Mm -hmm.